Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 80. Yeah, the graphic works. Yes, tech talk number 80. 80 hours of voiceover technology, all accessible to you. Believe it or don't. <laughs> And uh, if you've got a question for George or I about home studio, uh, home voiceover studio tech, throw it in the chat room, either in Facebook or on YouTube, because there's a chat room in there. And if you're in there, you know, yeah, of course, there's a chat room. I see it right there. Throw it in there. And Jeff Holman will get us those questions. And we love getting your questions. Anything at all about home voiceover studio technology, throw it in there right now. So let's get into it. George, you got some stuff from Nam. Nam, a little bit announcement from WWDC about Mac stuff. A cool. lot to talk about. All righty. Coming up now, voiceover body shop tech talk. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom. The engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great-sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. 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 Yeah, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studio technology. My voice ain't 100% there. Still getting over that COVID thing that everybody's going to get, guys. I'm telling you, it's out there. I'm hearing some about it two to three times. Yeah. Uh, you know, the vaccine, yeah, it's, it stops you from getting really sick, but it, you know, still can happen to you. But it didn't kill me. So. Right, survival is the fittest at this point. <laughs> yes, and we all know voice actors are the fittest. Anyway, yes. um, if you got a question for us, throw it in the chat room. We'll be happy to answer that. We thrive on that. Because part of what George and I do, I mean, George does it full-time. I'm a voice actor, but I also spend a, a good deal of time working with you and your home voiceover studio. You know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There's a lot of stuff you don't understand. People are intimidated by the mere fact that they've got to do this on a computer, despite the fact that, you know, most of us have been using computers for probably you know, 30, 40 years. Some people uh, read too many forum posts. There, and that's the other thing. There's an awful lot of mythology and silliness, and everybody's an expert in one studio, their own. I was Except, also going to say one-upmanship. Yes. Yeah. It's like, you know, can you top this? You know, I got this microphone. It's going to be great. Oh, you got to use this channel strip. You got to use this. You... It doesn't matter because every voice is different and every room is different. So the only way to make sure that your sound is sounding the way it's supposed to sound like is to talk to the guys that actually know what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. Whistle. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to work with us, we know the answers. We can get you get it done right. I had clients this week. They're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. 
and I got to come in, tell them what equipment to buy and, you know, check out their space and see what it is that has to get done. And, and George, you do the same thing. You know, we're talking to people all the time. A lot of people getting into voiceover, a lot of people that have been doing it professionally for many years, but they, after the pandemic, they're like, oh, I guess I have to have a home studio. Despite the fact that you and I have been telling them for like 10, 15 years Mm -hmm. that you have to have a home studio, but do they listen? No, it takes something else to push them on. But if you want to get the best instruction and the best consulting on how to get your home voiceover studio sounding the way it's supposed to sound like. And save a heck of a lot of time while you're at it. And money at this at the same time. I mean, because, you know. Time I mean, is you, money. You can Time is money and equipment is expensive and it's not the most expensive equipment that's going to make you sound the best. It's the best environment and we're going to teach you how to do that. And we'll be happy to answer questions on that as well. So if you want to work with George over at georgethe.tech, where do they go? Well, you you nailed it. George the <laughs> dot tech. My name is my address, and uh, that's where my home on the web is for all things tech. And I have got free resources on that site, quite a few of them actually. Um, I've got uh, my uh, my version of the specimen cup. I call it a sound check. Not quite as clever, but same idea. Send me the audio in, and I'll give you feedback about uh, what I'm hearing and what could be improved. Not the performance, just the technology. You know, just the just the tech. Uh, how's your mic placement? How's your room tone? How's the room sound, et cetera? Um, and that's all over there at georgethe.tech. But Dan does a lot of the same kind of thing at his own place on the web, and that's at homevoiceoverstudio.com. I'll let Dan do the try. I, I was going to click that one in there. Sorry, we both clicked at the same time. <laughs> time, and boom, it's gone. Uh, all right. Yeah, homevoiceoverstudio.com is where you'll find me. And this, the, supposedly the new site is going live and the specimen collection cup is now at the top of the page. So when you go to homevoiceoverstudio.com, it's right there and you can send me a sample for $25. I will analyze your audio and I will tell you whether it's great or where the shortcomings are and how to fix them. And if it's really bad, or if you really want more involved instruction, we can set up a full uh, consult and ask anybody that's worked with me, we have a lot of fun doing that. And, uh, you know, and I might get a little bit more into performance than, you know, cause George doesn't, doesn't teach yeah. that stuff as a voice actor. You know, I've heard it all. I've seen it you, all. You, you have a little bit more uh, of a, of a, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Expertise. Expertise. That's, <laughs> that's a simple word to explain it in terms of performance. Absolutely. You've been coached and coach and, and act yourself and you yeah. have for many years so yeah since like the nixon administration so uh <laughs> you know i am not a crook you know that's the thing about impersonations you have to do the physicality you can't go i am not a crook it doesn't sound like nixon you have to go i am not a crook and then you gotta get those jowls physical physicality is an important part of that so i can teach performance a little bit too uh and i get a lot into don't over project your voice you know it's conversational use your indoor voice things like that Anyway, uh, go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, you'll be able to find me there and see all the services I offer as well. And now, George, you were at NAM last week or this weekend, correct? Yeah, just just uh, by the time you're seeing this replayed, it was a week ago. Um, it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I actually was there all three days. Um, I did something really different this year and I came there as a support uh, and reporter for officehours.global, a completely different place on the web where people are discussing technology in their own way. Um, and I just, uh, they wanted to do it live and actually have it be interactive like we do our show here, but from the show floor. And we managed to pull that off. And I'll show you quickly first, just I'll, I'll show you a little bit of a playback package of... Um, of just what it looked like to be at the show this year. Let's throw that in there. So here's a, and I won't go for too long, long on this, but here is uh, the set we got to use. They actually had wow. sets created by AKG and Harmon where the media could sit down and have interviews, which was really, really cool. And then we just started walking the floor. In this case, we're trying to get to the Taylor guitar booth for a specific meet with a meet and greet with a, with a, a talented guitarist who was going to give us a demo and they had their own set and everything. And 
we took a nice stroll with our camera system on this <laughs> this camera system that was built by Noah Sargent. Uh, Noah's shooting the handheld video, so you're not seeing him, but Noah from CorporateStreams.com built this rig just to cover the NAM show. Live streamed from two cameras through a, a switcher, through a thing called Mr. Net that connected us to the, you know, to the satellite or whatever. It was not satellite. It was just LTE modems, but still. And uh, it was, it was, I'll tell you, a technological tour de force. It was amazing. If, if I had the tools and the wherewithal and the motivation, it's how I would love to have done the show. And I got to do it. So it was a blast being the sole reporter. We were supposed to have two. Unfortunately, guess what? The other one got COVID. Mm. So... I had to do uh, take the shoulder shoulder the entire load of being the reporter. Thankfully, we uh, had a crew back at a virtual studio that was anchoring the show and keeping the conversation going. And then we had a panel of folks who were really on Zoom. Um, here we are like, still. We tried to find Taylor Guitar down at the end of the hall, the absolute <laughs> other end from where we were, and there was nothing there. It was a it was it was a mistake on the maps. Oops. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, it took eons to make our way back up. I mean, I'll fast forward three minutes. Here we are now prepping to go into the Taylor room and actually sit down with Taylor's guitar, uh, guitar player. There he is. And, uh, and you know, I got to sit there and interview a guitarist. I didn't think I'd be doing that. I don't know a dang thing about guitars, but you do it. They throw in front of you. So, Anyway, we, we had a heck of a great time in interviewing and talking to all these vendors, like as Dan and I have done in the past. And uh, that's it. There's a, little, there's a little quick overview of what it looked like to be at NAM yeah. this year. It wasn't nearly as intense, crowded, and overbearing as before the before times. I know. My ears are still ringing from the second time I went. <laughs> it was just people and people and people. And, you know, with uh, with COVID now, it's like, you know, you can't gather people like that. And someone, you're going to get something from somewhere. Were there a lot of people wearing masks or was it? <sighs> Not as many as you might hope. Uh, maybe a quarter of the people there probably. So, uh, yeah. So I, I tested myself today. Nothing yet. I might do another test in a couple of days and see. But, uh, but it was, it was quite exhilarating. It was, it was fun. It was a little stressful at times. Um, being, being ready to go live like four or five times when the uplinks keeps failing over and over while you're standing next to the guitar, the keyboardist from dream theater, who's a, like a rock star legend, you know, and then it, <laughs> that was really intense. That was really intense. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, we did get one package. We, we got a lot of, uh, interviews, but one that's probably relevant to us. Um, I did manage to uh, find in our timeline. I have the video queued up from YouTube from uh, our Saturday coverage, it's a five hour and 10 minute long YouTube video. But I managed to queue it up and uh, here we go. This is a, this is a little just talk with Focusrite about your next interface to replace your Scarlet. Let's take a look. I will pot that up as they say. To in Anaheim, California, and we've made it back to the other end of the hall to see Focusrite and what's new at Focusrite. And to tell us all about it is John D. Nicola. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. We're really excited to be back here at the NAMM show for sure. I know we're all getting warmed up again, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, Focusrite, always innovating, really some great products that are cost effective, easy to use. And now you guys have really stepped it up in the streaming podcasting world. Tell us what you got. Yeah, exactly. So we have a whole new range of... We have a whole new uh, range of audio interfaces, uh, the Vocaster, and for the first time, we've developed this range specifically with the needs of podcasters and voiceover artists and, and et cetera in mind. And so what we've done is, um, for example, we have our, you, you may know our, you may be familiar with our Scarlet interfaces, the most popular USB interfaces in the world. Um, and so we've gotten a lot of great feedback from our customers, uh, from podcasters and streamers. And they've told us, and in, in our research, we've realized that, you know, there's a lot of features that are a little bit different that they need. Um, and so we decided, um, and since Scarlet's were kind of designed with musicians in mind, we thought, why not go create a new interface from the ground up with all that great feedback? And that's where Vocaster comes in. So uh, our idea was to take the barriers, remove barriers, make it easier to use, and provide some of those extra features that uh, these types of people need. So You guys must have just gotten so much feedback and probably listening to the community of users out there. 
I, I set up voiceover studios for a living. That's all I do, right? So Scarlet's are pervasive, you know? So you guys, I get a lot of feedback. I know it's helpful. And based on the little teasers I've heard, this seems to scratch a lot of itches. Can you give us some ideas of what's special about this? Yeah, absolutely. So I'd like to start off talking about the microphone input. Uh, the mic input uh, has automatic gain setting. So that's a pain point that a lot of our Scarlers customers told us is just setting the right recording level. And so we take the guesswork out of that. We just go over here, we can press this button, and then we can talk into the microphone for about 10 seconds and it'll automatically set the gain level for you. Uh, another important part to mention about this mic preamp is it has 70 dB of gain. And so it's, Whoa! Yeah, exactly. For, well, a lot, much more than many than most interfaces, uh, and that's going to be allowing you to you know run those professional dynamic broadcast microphones without, without any kind of other preamp. So uh, that's a big one that we were a uh, big request that we had as well. So. Um What's some of the unique features that allow it to be uh, fit into a workflow of someone who's live streaming or podcasting? Perfect timing. Uh, so the next button over here is the uh, magic wand uh, or the enhance tool. And what this does is it allows you to pick some presets <clears throat> uh, that apply focus right processing. So EQ, compression, uh, all that stuff that you would normally do in post-production, uh, it's gonna give you that polished sound right out of the vocaster. So of course, if you're live streaming, that's critical. Um, but even if you're recording, it's just going to get your recording sounding that much better right into the recording uh, rather than having to fix it after the fact. Um, so you have four presets, so you don't have to worry about needing, you don't, know how, you don't need to know how to use a, a compressor or EQ. You just pick the preset right there, and then you can turn it on and off from the front of the unit. We've also added a, a mute button, which sounds really simple, but you know, for a voiceover podcast situation, super helpful to have that feedback right there, and you can quickly mute and unmute as well. We call it a cough button on the radio. I was gonna say that, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've been hearing that throughout the show. Um, so yeah, we, ha so we have that, and then we have some extra connectivity options as well that kind of fit into that workflow. So for example, uh, on Vocaster 2, for the first time, we've included Bluetooth in the interface. Uh, and that's a two-way connection. So you can uh, do a phone interview, um, and you know, you're gonna get that audio into your show, into the Vocaster Hub software, and then Vocaster Hub will send a mix minus mix out so that the person you're interviewing can hear the show without hearing their voice, of course. So uh, you're all set for phone interviews. You can also do that with a TRRS connection on the back, um, because our Vocaster 1 actually does not have Bluetooth, but you can get your phone in on um, that way. And on Vocaster 2, you can do it both ways. So you can actually connect two phones. So this guy. The Vocaster one does have the TRRS mix minus type thingamabob built yeah. into it? Yes, it does. And actually, while we're talking about Vocaster one, that's the main difference is the Bluetooth. And then, of course, the fact that it has a single microphone input and a single headphone output. Uh, over here on Vocaster two, not only do we have the two uh, mic inputs, but we also have two uh, headphone outputs. And that's another thing that, you know, podcasters were requesting. And I can see big, big dedicated knobs to control so a guest who's sitting there can easily know what knob to turn and just grab it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's great to have that because, you know, devices that rely too much on one big knob can be a little confounding to use in a live situation. It's fine if you're self-engineering and you're just taking your time, but in a live heat of the moment, you want to be able to grab something. and quit. So I'm glad you guys did keep a couple you know, physical controls. Yeah, absolutely. And um, another thing I'd mention is we, uh, one more uh, connection on the back is we do have an eighth inch camera audio output too. So if you're doing video along with your show, you can connect that audio directly to the cameras and record it directly to the camera's memory card so you don't have to worry about that in post as well. Oh, you don't have to sync audio. You don't have to worry about getting the USB to sync up with the video capture. Yeah, well, yeah exactly. And uh, actually, and you could even use this as a preamp. Uh, this doesn't even need a computer to run. So if you just want to use the preamp and the enhanced mode and record right to your camera in the field, you can plug this into a battery pack and do that as well. It's, it is really well thought out. I mean, sometimes, you know, I, 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 sometimes I'd say, we were a little, made that maybe fake focus right was a little bit late to the party, right? But the advantage of that is you get to look at what everybody else has done yeah, exactly. and go, I think we can do that better. I think there's another way to do that, et cetera. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up because it, we've been researching and developing Vocaster for a number of years. And uh, like you said, we got to get a lot of great feedback and uh, we tried to put as much of it in there as we could. Well, it's, we've got <laughs> questions. Look at them queuing up on screen. So <laughs> let's get to uh, the first. So I'd rather get questions from uh, our audience yeah. rather than spend time on the audience questions from the show. But you guys can uh, go find the full video. Just type in uh, NAM Office Hours on YouTube, and you can watch the 
entire thing <laughs> which is really all five long. hours of it yeah. <laughs> anyway so yeah i think what focus right did was they they iterated on what's been done they they looked at the evo by audience they looked at the uh the revelator which i have right here mm -hmm. they looked at the roadcaster and they took i think really honestly i think they took the best things from each of those and baked it into this yeah. and it's 300 dollars, uh which we didn't get to but the the unit itself, the the two is three hundred. The one is two hundred. Um, I think most people will be very happy with the one. Uh, the fact that it has that TRRS cable to add a phone patch mix minus is pretty darn nifty um, at that price point. I I think they really uh, may have nailed it. But I'm gonna always, as always, wait until we've had time to play with one. And I they told me that if I reached out to their marketing director, that they would get us one to. Uh, to test out so i want one i want one i want one i gotta check yeah, it out yeah 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 so uh yeah so that was cool getting to be there and and soak all that in um I, let's see what else we can fly through here because i have a lot on here yeah um audience showed off the evo 16 um it has eight mic preamps and it has that same auto gain setting feature so mm. if you're recording a band or a large podcast with five six seven mics it's awesome. You hit a button, everybody goes, hey, mom, mom, I'm George, I'm Steph, and everybody just talks away, and it just sets everybody's game. Boom, done. Um, if you were self-recording your own drums, that would be sweet to not have to set all those mic gains for. That's cool. Um, also, AES was basically wrapped up inside NAM this year, right? They may have done this before, I'm not sure, but um, I, I popped up, and I was really lucky to catch an acoustics presentation by Sam Burkow of SIA Acoustics. This guy designs, he designs big stuff, concert halls and et cetera. Really, really impressive spaces. And I was, it was fun because they took questions. And so after this whole thing about big expensive rooms and control rooms, it's like, so how do you acoustically tune a little three by five room the size of a closet for voiceover? What would you recommend, you know? And it really kind of stumped them because they just don't work on those spaces at we all. We do. <laughs> and we do. Yeah. So it was really fascinating, you know, to see that. It, and it, it kind of proves and reinforces my, one of my discovery that acousticians, those big, big time guys with all the degrees and all the maths, don't know how to tune small spaces for, for acoustically for VO in general. I mean, some probably do, but mostly they don't. So, that was interesting. They were really nice, and they said if we ever wanted to chat with them, um, we could, and we'll have to reach out. Um, WWDC just happened as well, and uh, here's the very short version of the short version <laughs> of, of WWDC. There's a new processor chip now. It's called the M2, so it's the, uh, it's the next step from M1. It's one better. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's got a higher number, but it's got it a better, higher better? number. <laughs> um, the new MacBook Air was released. It is slightly lighter than the current MacBook Air. Uh, it is, the screen is slightly, slightly larger uh, at 13.6 inches diagonal. Um, they make it in four different colors, but not the fun colors. I thought for sure they'd have all those fun iMac colors. Nope. They have, uh, I think, space gray, gold. Rose gold and silver, something like that. So not candy colors anymore. Yeah, they don't have. Yeah. They, they didn't do that those cool. fun iMac colors for the MacBook Air. Surprised me. Yeah. Um, MagSafe charger is back, baby. Thank God, the third version of MagSafe is back. So now that was a dedicated charge cable for the unit. Um, but they've maintained just you know the two uh, USB C Thunderbolts and a headphone jack, just like the current or the one that I have and the one that a lot of us have. Um, so it can go up to 24 gigabytes of memory. So that's good. There's more upgradability there. But again, you got to do that from Apple. And the MacBook Pro 13-inch, same deal. It's just an incremental update to the one they released two and a half, a uh, year and a half ago. Nothing really to write home about there. M2 is like, on, in general, about 20 to 30% better performance than M1. Rush out and buy it? Heck no. If you have an M1 MacBook Air, you're fine. If you're still thinking about upgrading from an Intel machine, it's fine. Then and, and they're selling both the M1 and the M2s on the store I just checked. They also released Mac OS Ventura. Well, they they announced it, I should say. Not released it. They announced it. So that's the next OS. They're moving down the coast. I'm hoping the next one's OS Mac OS like uh, 
Santa Monica or something. We'll see. Uh, but Oxnard. Uh, yeah, Oxnard. <laughs> That's what am I thinking? Oxnard, of course. Um, okay, and then Camarillo and then right, Thousand yeah. Oaks. And Keep then... moving down. Um, yeah, there's, you know, and as I like to say, there's more newness in it. It has more new things. Um, even less important to upgrade to, as I can tell, but it has something called Stage Manager, which is a clever way of moving between windows. Spotlight Searching now searches text in images. So that could save time trying to find stuff, especially if you scan and take pictures of all your receipts. You can now just look for that. Um, there's continuity camera. What they're basically admitting is that, hey, the phone camera in your iPhone is a lot better than the <laughs> webcam in our computer. So let's Hell let you yeah. do that. So that's finally a feature built into Ventura. We've had our own third-party tools to do this now for a while, but it's now built in. They're even going to sell a bracket, believe it or not, a proper bracket to put your iPhone on the top of your computer monitor just for that purpose. Really interesting to see them do that. Yep. Much better. I love the, I love the camera. The camera, the even on a four-year-old iPhone, the camera is dramatically better than the camera on your uh, MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or anything. Um, last, and, last but not least, iPad OS. There's a thing called Handoff now, which works with Stage Manager, makes your iPad feel a little bit more like a Mac. You can actually now see two windows sort of overlapping each other at times. They're, they're kind of making iPads more and more useful. Um, it's getting there. Um, so that's the, the new iOS, uh, iPad OS 16. So that's coming later. So this was, again, this was WWDC. This was for developers, Worldwide Developer Conference. So I was really surprised they announced a MacBook Air, uh, new hardware, but it is out. It is there. So um, that's my wrap-up of my tech, my tech news for the week. Dan, you got anything to... To, to tie up our uh, conversation? Well, I, I, what I noticed is, and yeah, I mean, we've been sort of commenting along as this has gone along, that yeah. the manufacturers don't design stuff for voiceover. We're just borrowing all this technology to to do what we do. Uh, Until now, kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean. I mean, you, they put the name VO in the name. Yeah, it's true. But they also put the, the word caster in it. So. Yeah. They're sitting in the boardrooms of corporations thinking about what they're going to make, and when, it's podcasting. When stuff. Focus, when, when, when Focusrite makes a box called the Voice Actor, yeah, I then will we'll be. Know, uh, yeah, I don't see it happening. Anytime. I don't see it happening either. But yeah. if it, that would be a miracle. Yeah, but what's interesting is you know because I talk to a lot of people who do podcasting too, and as sure. I always say, just because everybody can do a podcast doesn't mean everybody should. Uh, but uh, the tech, you know, people are still t intimidated by the technology. And of course, you know, when you and I probably talk to people about podcasting, we really take it from a voiceover point of view and not the overprocessed, compressed kind of sound that people keep trying to do on podcasting. So they sound like they're on the radio as opposed to just loud enough so people can hear you nice and clearly. And, you know, there's, there's lots of discussion left about that. And uh, I mean, there's the way we do our podcast. I mean, we do the TV show that we're, you know, our webcast that we're doing now. And we just take the audio and we shove it out there as a podcast. No one seems to complain. What is it? This there's people going for a certain sound. It doesn't make any sense to me. Make yourself sound clear. No background noise. No vocal reflection, and proper modulation. Now this this vocaster thing has an automatic gain setter. There's a whole piece of my general lesson that I can take out if someone has one of those. Yeah, I mean, we want people to know how to set gain, but right. honestly, you're, as an actor, if we can take that one little step out of there and take the, maybe maybe it's not even about getting the guesswork out of it. It's maybe it's about removing the anxiety about it. Yeah. Um, but if we can just do that, you know, we've been able to hold up a phone and get auto focus and auto white balance for how long now? So it's it's kind of funny how audio has been so so far behind in terms of auto settings that actually are good. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're getting there. All right. Well, we got a ton of questions. That's what we love about this show. We get audience questions, and we'll get to those right after these important announcements. Do not go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Everybody Show. And now a word from Harlan Hogan and voiceoveressentials.com. Has this ever happened to you? Embarrassing. 
The washers on these booms, eh, they're not so great at holding up your expensive microphone. And here's the answer. The adjustable boom stop is great. Easy to attach and works like a charm. No more droopy mic. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. Unique double loop webbing system for unlimited angle of the downstrap. Works with tripod and solid round bases. Light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for each performer. It's three ounces of protection for your expensive microphone with free standard shipping in the continental U.S. Hold up your mic with the ABS Adjustable Boom Stop. Hey, remember Father's Day is coming up, so ask your loved ones to get you a VoiceOver Essentials gift card. Tell them to go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Hey everybody, it's time to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. And as you heard in the show last week with Matt Calric, this is a tool that lets you stay connected sometimes all day long to producing partners. You know, this is another way to think of a use of a tool like Source Connect. We traditionally think of it as just a way to connect to a client's studio. But what if you were to use it to connect to a partner's studio or an assistant's studio or a virtual engineer that you work with who's going to help you become more productive in the use of your your talent as a voice actor what if imagine imagine if you had somebody that you could connect to in the morning stay connected to throughout the day take a lunch break then connect in the afternoon and they just line up your auditions and your jobs for you and they do the recording source connect can do this stably with extremely high quality and it just it's like the world's greatest telephone. If you've never had a conversation over Source Connect, it's it's just amazing. It changes the way you communicate because it's so clear. You hear everything from the other person and it's just a very natural way of, of, of connecting. So it's just, I found it really fascinating to hear how he uses it. But if you want to get it into your studio, go to source-elements.com and get a 15-day trial. You don't necessarily need to buy it. You don't even have to license it. Just get that demo up and running so you know how to use it. So when that session comes along, you're ready. And tell them you've got Source Connect. That's going to get you some more gigs. And it's proven. Anyway, this is George the Tech. Thanks for lit sponsoring us, Source Elements. And let's get back to those questions right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hey there, we're back. No, I like that view better. Okay, so <laughs> we have a ton of... A ton of questions. It's time for the lightning round. We sure do. Where should we start with Lydia Meadows? <laughs> da, 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 da. Lightning round. Okay. Yeah, let's start with Lydia Meadows. All right. For Alrighty. possible tech talk or Dan or George, what is a good travel setup for recording on the go? Um, dynamic mic, a Zoom thingy, a computer interface thingamabob, combo, whatever. What are you guys liking, I guess, is what Lydia wants to know. Well, there's, okay, the first question I ask when somebody asks me this question is, how much traveling do you do? <laughs> it's like, you know, if you're just starting out, it's this has to be one of your lowest priorities. Uh, you've got to be able to record at home. You've got to be able to do auditions and stuff like that. 
if you're if you're well connected, if you're a, you know a, a, a you know a top paid uh, voice actor, if you're somebody that's you know as we like to say golden handcuffs uh, doing promo work, very very tiny percentage of people that you really need to have a road unit. That said, keep it super duper simple. Don't have to worry about all sorts of other things, especially since you're only going to be able to do auditions on the road or one-off commercials or stuff like that. You can't do something on the road that you started at home. Certainly not audiobooks. Uh, so for traveling, you know, I like, uh, you know, Epigee makes the Epigee hype and the Epigee mic. They're fabulous. It really sounds like a 416 uh, if you use it right. There are techniques yep. to it. We can show you how to do that. And uh, But, you know, that in a closet, you know, in your, in, in your MacBook or whatever, and it sounds great. You just have to know how to use it. Good mic uh, technique. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no two ways about it. So mm-hmm. that's that's my that's my thing. You know, it's like it, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a USB mic, but it's like one of the best USB mics, uh, and it sounds really good <laughs> if you use it properly. Not very forgiving on plosives and stuff like that. So you have to use proper mic techniques so there are no plosives. A friend of a client or friend or somebody I saw recently in their setup they were using for travel use the Rode Video Mic NTG, and they did find it to be a really, really good travel shotgun mic. So well, that's something it. else that you can uh, consider as an alternative if you want to have that shotgun mic travel mic. And Dan, you've got the little baby Rode Video Mic Go 2. The Go 2. And, and I'm hearing, I mean, from what you sampled for me, or just just the test that you did with it, that thing blew me away for a hundred dollars. Sounds great. And yeah. USB too yeah. on top of that. Of course, of course, you have to get the special cable for it. It's yes, that's it's another a, thirty, forty dollars, right? Yeah, for that cable. Yeah, I bought two just in case. Yes, good idea. Uh, but it, but it does work as a, you know, it does work. You know, and the thing is, is if you're just doing narration or something like that, it's probably just fine. Mm-hmm. Next question from Alicia Hurley for George the Tech. Okay. She's, she's considering getting a recon van and putting a small <laughs> studio in it. What do you suggest for internet service as I travel that keeps Source Connect ports open to traveling places? Now you have expertise in recording in a van, don't you? Well, I've 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 dem- I've messed around with it. I've had clients doing it. Um, this 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 just depends on uh, a lot of factors, but. Uh, the the thing that's probably the most enticing technology right now that a few people I know are actually experimenting with Byron Wagner um, is the uh, the Starlink. Yeah, Starlink. That's the technology that Elon Musk is uh, has released. That he's flying uh, hundreds and now thousands of small satellites around the globe and spreading it with internet and quite good internet, actually quite fast internet with quite low latency. So um, you can't, well, some say they've actually managed to use it while, on, while in motion. It wasn't designed for that, but um, it's, uh, it, the, the antenna auto, auto aims itself once you get to your location. You just set it up. Um, and uh, you might want to check that out if you really do want connectivity in rural locations. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be stuck with the fun of dealing with 5G, 4G, or whatever LTE thing you can find, and uh, keeping Source Connect ports open is not often going to be a, a viable or even possible when you're doing mobile modems and things like that. But you know what? Can who can answer that? Probably is is Source Elements. They know their technology better than anybody, so they may know things that I haven't even thought of trying yet. All right, uh, from Terry Briscoe. Hello again, guys. Thank you for sharing your insight as always. Uh, so I'm trying to work my way up the microphone hierarchy, and since I can't afford the 416 just yet, I'd like to know both of your opinions on the MKE 600, which is the uh, MK. That's the uh, this Sennheiser. This is like the entry level version of a 416 from their right. product line. Yeah, I haven't tried one. Uh, I think you have though, haven't you? I've heard it. I th- not too long ago, I think somebody said that that's what they were using, and it sounded fine. I I didn't. I had no complaints about it whatsoever. I don't know why I don't hear it or even recommend it more often than I do for whatever reason. I don't know. And maybe because there's so many out there and you start forgetting about some of the ones that have been around already for a while. But yeah, 
it's worked fine in the in the cases that I've heard it being used. Yeah, and he goes on to say uh, the Vocaster looks very promising. So for us that are doing just VO in our home studios, would the Vocaster B1 be sufficient and have pretty much the same features? Yeah, it doesn't have the Absolutely. Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah, there's no Bluetooth on that, but I find Bluetooth to be fiddly and annoying, and I, I, I wouldn't want to use it anyway. It's got the, the TRRS cable connection that with a phone adapter for your mobile phone, your you know the headset adapter for your iPhone, or uh, if you've got a phone with a headset jack, is a plug-and-play phone patch solution. So uh, that's really, really nice, especially if you're on Windows where sharing audio devices between different apps is a nightmare. Um, this now allows you to have a dedicated audio device just for communication, and you can use your primary USB interface connection for your DAW. So that could be really helpful. I know for, for sure, I've, in the experimentations I've done with the Sentrance uh, Portcaster, that that connection is really, really useful. And um, so nice to see it at that $200 price point. Yeah. All right. You get the question from Dave G. Dave G. Um, Dave says, uh, most underused service, question mark? I'm assuming he's talking about our services. Um, Leonard's Soundcheck. He made sure my niece's booth in New York City was kosher. Sounds like a plug for a sound check. Um, yeah, in, do it. In, in Dan's <laughs> case, it's the specimen collection cup. But um, anything that will get you our objective feedback about your audio that will take the guesswork out of it, only for $25 is a no-brainer. Um, I, I am, I'm biased. but um, And Dave also says, hey, George, you have done an effect stack for my Twisted Wave using a large diaphragm condenser but now i'm using a 416 and it sounds fine uh, any problems with that <laughs> uh, thanks for reminding us to say if it sounds good it is good yeah that's the answer to that question or should, or should he get another stack for the 416 yeah i want more money so please order another stack please yeah i'm happy to take your money <laughs> Uh, no, if it sounds good, it is good. It is, is good, as yeah. always is the, is always the case. Yeah, if you, right. but if you're not sure, let you know. Reach out. Yeah. Now oh, here's a great question, Dan. What do you do when there's too much copy for the time allotted for a commercial audition? <laughs> uh, he just ran into it last <laughs> night on a, on a on an audition. Well, you know, that if, was Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Holman wrote that one. Uh, the thing about long copy. Now, if you were in radio, like I was, that was always a problem. It's like, you know, the salesperson, hey, I need this in half an hour, you know, and you know, give you a business card and say, I need a spot. But it's got to say this, 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 and this, and this. And I'm like, we have 60 seconds. Uh, although I think a lot of commercials have gone to 15 seconds now. You know, I remember advocating for that like, you know, 30 years ago. Look, go to 15 second commercials, 60 second commercials are, you know, they're, they're too long. But for some reason, they still write copy that's too long. Uh, what do you do when it's too long? Well, you have a couple of options. One, you tell the client, you know, this is too long. You've sent me 45 seconds of copy for 30 seconds, and unless you want me to talk really fast and get it all in there, which is not what you want, you want your message across clearly. Can we cut this down? Is there sentences we can take out? And you collaborate with them to try and get it that way. Uh, you can also try and speed it up a little bit, but I have found in all of my career, if that's the case, diplomacy wins, uh, because mm. the client does not want there's everything in there. I mean, they want everything in there, but you learn to compromise. And if it's on a national spot or it's a, you know, it's something big from a big agency, what on earth are they doing writing 45 seconds of copy for a 30 yeah. second spot? Yeah, I was going to say if they're if it's a big national spot, you'll never pro you never have to do that. If it's a smaller, you know, market yeah. then maybe. Yeah, I guess, but, but but the good stuff is poetry. The stuff from yeah. the national, you know, national agencies is just it's like it's refined, it's tested and it's 30 seconds. <laughs> so, have you yeah. ever have you ever done I I don't think you would ever do this Dan, but maybe you would. Have you ever recorded the entire script and then used this the uh pitch and speed, pitch and time uh, plug in and just sped it all the way up and then said, okay, this is what it would sound like. Yeah, I, I have done that, <laughs> you know, and, and they're like, oh, uh, all right. Could you, can we cut some of the copy? 
yeah. You know, is this sentence necessary? Is that sentence necessary? Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to be diplomatic about it. Yes. And, and, and Don't be snarky. Say, no, That's the way like, to lose a gig. Yeah. Right. It's like, okay, you know, can we work with this? You know, you've got way too much copy in here. I mean, I can talk faster, but this is what it's going to sound like. And that's not what you want. And they're usually like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it's like, okay. So yeah. Be diplomatic about it. I think is the best way to do it. And, uh, you know, try and get it, you know, in the time frame if you can. If there's too much, then you got to say, look, this is not 30 seconds worth of copy. This is much longer. Okay, you get the next one here. This from one is from Matt Matthew King. King. Uh, I forgot to ask I uh, last I had the chance, but what would be the ideal starter audio interface? They're important too, right? Actually, what is an interface? Sorry for the obvious question. <laughs> what is hey, an audio interface? Everybody has to start somewhere, Matthew. It's okay. What, right. What does this little thing do? It does two things. Uh, number one, it has a preamplifier in it which is really where the true quality of one of these things is. Uh, you know, we've, you know, we've talked about a bunch of different interfaces, you know, about the, the new uh, Vo Vocaster and the Evo 4 and the Evo 16 and all these things. They all, the ones that are over $120, $150, all have excellent preamps in them. Now, you were talk we were talking about the Vocaster with, uh, at NAM. He said 70 dB of gain in there. That's pretty good. If it's 70 dB of quiet gain, that's even better. It takes the low-level signal that you know, your condenser microphone produces uh, and amplifies it. Then the other part of it is, where you see the USB plug on the back, is it takes that analog audio and turns it into the ones and zeros or plus and minuses that your computer understands as sound and gives a, it has the actual sound in there and gives us the graphic representation of the waveform and some of the other things that you can get. That's what the interface does. And you can control the input gain from there. Uh, a lot of people are liking these USB mics that have an interface preamp and digital interface built into them, but they're not quite as good as, say, a good solid unit like this. It also will provide uh, phantom power over here. So... You got to have that with a studio condenser mic, and all good interfaces have that. Except that that one, what was it? The uh, oh, the Omni or whatever it was called, a Behringer unit? No, 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 no. the MXL uh, mic paint. Is that well, it? Well, no, the mic, the mic, mic, the mic mate has one on it. Yeah, it's not a good one. But <laughs> no, it has I didn't one. say it was good, but no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but a, a long time ago, uh, uh, Omega. What was the name of the company? I don't remember. But they had a they had a preamp and an interface, but it didn't have phantom power. You oh, the Lexicon like, Alpha. Lexicon Alpha. Thank yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. that, that did not have phantom power. No phantom but power. It, but it also provides phantom power, and that's what the interface does. Uh, what would be an ideal starter interface? Focus right solo, super duper. You know, a third generation got a great preamp in it. It does super. Uh, you know, and it might be the only one you ever need, and they're not expensive, like one hundred twenty dollars for one of those. But also the Yamahas, uh, the AG03 or AG06. Steinbergs. The Steinberg, uh, the UR, what is it, the 22 and the 12? And, 12, yeah. Yeah, those are, those are all very, Rock very solid. Good. Yeah. The thing pick, is, is pick, yeah. not a Behringer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even the best Behringer is not as good as the cheapest Focusrite, I think, yeah. based on the reviews I've seen. And always get an interface where there's one knob per function. I, you know, that Focaster looks enticing, but I'm telling you, anytime one knob does more than one thing, it can get a little more confusing to operate. So if you're not a techie person, go with the units that have a knob for gain, a knob for headphones, a button for phantom. You know, it's you're going to be happier. But if you are techie and you like gadgets and you're not intimidated by it, then those more sophisticated ones have a little bit more flexibility. All righty. Grace Newton. Yes. All right, For the guys. Uh, yeah. I've moved and I need to treat a six and a half by seven foot walk in closet with four internal walls in a rental home. What is the first thing you would do? I would record some voiceover room tone in there and see how noisy it is in there. It might be the quietest place in your home or it might not. So that's, true. that's the best reason to use a closet is because it might be the quietest, but it may not be. 
Right. And you've got to record that so we can hear what noise is actually there because most of the noise that you're, you know, you think you don't hear is still there. Our brains tune it out because it's always there and you don't hear it. But this guy doesn't have a brain. It it hears everything and throws it on your hard drive and yep. and we look at it and listen to it. You, you hear that ceiling fan behind you <laughs> or, uh, you know. The attic there, fan or the refrigerator down the hall. Oh, cripes, yeah. Refrigerators. Vibrating. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, like it in small, you know, open apartments. It's like. You, you might want to unplug your fridge. You know, just remember to plug it back in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, and how would you treat it? Four internal walls in a rental home. Uh, well, you know, Oralex foam, although, you know, I'm still finding Harbor Freight <laughs> moving blankets work great. But if you want to go a step up from there, uh, you know, the vocal booth to go, uh, producer's choice blanket, blankets or audio mute. Those work really great too, and that doesn't take a lot to hang them up. If you know, heavy, have, dense blankets, yeah, yeah. In fact, you're renting, so I would get um, command strips hooks. Yep. Go on Amazon, type in command stri- strips utility hooks, right? And now you can hang a bunch of those blankets from grommets without any damage to the walls, and that is going to take you a long, long way. And that's a pretty big size room, so it might seem small, but that's pretty big. So you might end up with really good results with just damping the walls with moving blankets, the heavy moving blankets. Yeah. The, the ones that weigh about 10 to 12 pounds yeah, per blanket. They, they work great. It's a great solution for, for a closet, uh, especially a walk-in closet like that. I had one over the weekend. You know, it's, it's like she had some of the really cheap foam. No, not the Oralex stuff. And, you know, and I got it all on the wall, and I'm like, nah, it's still pretty reflective. So what did I do? Because she had a high ceiling. Was it the I, foam that comes vacuum packed, and then you unpack the bag, you cut it. the bag? Yeah, yeah. I'm. Bu- I built her a cloud. Hey, hey. And, and that's go. And this is going in. You know, in, in her. In that's going to make a big difference. Yeah. Oh you man. Can, you can. You can. You know, place it just the right height, and and it will eliminate the the big room sound really fast, especially with a high ceiling. Yeah. You know, and you know. It's amazing what you can do with with uh, you know weed covering. Uh, let's see. Uh, Douglas Voice Guy gets the last question of the night, and he said, uh, "Did Focusrite improve the headphone levels? Did you uh, give it a listen on there? I, I imagine it seems like every iteration of of an interface seems to have better headphone levels in it. I hope so. I, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, ah. The nature of doing what I was doing, doing those reports." I, w- I wish I could have, but at the thing, I, the guy promised if I get at, if I get in touch with him that he would get us one to two tests. So um, then I'll know for sure, you know, what the the output levels on the headphones are. But they couldn't make it worse, so <laughs> it's got to be better. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be better. Um, let's just hope so. They clearly listened to a huge amount of feedback from the users. Um, when they when they invent when they when they developed it, so they, I would I would be shocked if it couldn't drive headphones uh, adequately well. There's also a, a pretty long preview video or review video of this from Mike Delgadio, who's been on our show, aka yep. the Booth Junkie. Um, if you go to YouTube, type in Booth Junkie Vocaster, and you'll see his much much longer in depth uh, review actually of the unit. He's got enough subscribers that. They send him those things before they even reach the NAM show. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's that's where he's at, and he he will let you find. You'll find out more uh, about in depth about the unit from watching his video. Okay, and that's the end of the lightning round. Yay! All right, well, we got through all of those questions with the right answers. <laughs> we we made them up just right. <laughs> That's right. All right. Okay, we'll be right back to wrap things up right after these important messages. So don't go away. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover 
actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And we're back. I figured it out. All right, so. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's a lot of questions and a lot of answers. I'm and, pooped. Yeah, me too. <laughs> And, and it's and it's just Monday, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Or whenever it I is didn't really have a weekend, so yeah. this feels like a Thursday or Friday to me right now. <laughs> yeah. I had the COVID. I was kind of foggy this weekend. Like, oh, now I get it. But today felt a lot better. All right. Good. Uh, who are our donors of the week? We'll start off with Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Shelley Avellino, Patty Gibbons, Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, and Martha Khan. Hey. All right, you guys know where to go in case you're, uh, if if you happen to need uh, something at at your home studio, you go to either George the dot tech or, or homevoiceoverstudio.com. dot com, uh, and that's where you'll find us, and that's how we get it done for you. And by oh. the time you see this, I will have the ability to order and sign up for my next webinar. So uh, that's Twisted Wave Advanced on June 25th. Uh, so just head over to georgethe.tech slash webinars. Yeah, I love Twisted Wave. We love our Twisted Wave. 15 yeah. years of Twisted Wave goodness. Yeah. I think that's how long it's been since I've known about it. Yeah, really, since, I think, since... Uh, since 2007, both. I feel like. Yeah, probably. Probably before you and I met, so... Yep. Because you were using it on the on the uh, the thing you were selling, the remote thing, uh, I remember. The vo to go kit? The vo to go kit, that's right. That's and right. And you're using Twisted Wave on that. And it, it hasn't changed a whole lot, except it is better. Yeah, they just, he keeps it updated, makes it, make sure it's debugged, and adds little, nice little features without getting in the way. That's the key. Don't yeah. get in the way of the user interface. Keep it clean. And right. that's what he does. Yeah. And I hear he's got a PC version coming out. But I hear. I, I, I hear it. I, I don't hear. know if it's true, but. That's what he said. All right. Well, that's I cool. will, uh, we'll be excited to share it with our Windows brethren when it Alrighty. comes, uh, when it's available to beta test. Excellent. Ah, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and, and JMC, JMC Demos. Demos, 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 Demos. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman. Great job in the chat room tonight getting all those questions to us, and uh, we appreciate that. 
Sue wasn't here this week. I'm, she's in it's Boston. Her, it was so. her birthday last week, actually. Oh, that's right. That's right. So happy birthday to her. But she didn't help us tonight. We switched off. <laughs> so we tag team. We, we, we tag team so we could do all these things ourselves, you know, like that and like that and like that and like this. <laughs> that's what she does. That's right. But, uh, and, of course, we got to thank Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We've got another great guest coming up next week. Uh, yeah, and then the 4th of July comes up, and that's going to throw our rotation into a bit of a a tizzy, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Look, it's not an easy business, but really important that your audio sounds good. But the thing is, if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. Have a good one. Later, everybody. <laughs>